Folks, welcome to one of your last stats videos of the year. This might be the last one, depending on if we can get this in under 15 minutes. Um, today we're brought to you by in-house sponsors of um, Carlos Coffee, Quaker Oats Protein Instant Oatmeal, and three of Mr. Yak's favorites on the run running gels, Hammer Gel, Cliff Shot, and Goo Tri Berry. Yum, yum, yum. Anyway, folks, your finals next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday for this lovely dual credit course. Find the mean and the standard deviation for the number of work days missed during a calendar year at a certain factory. If it doesn't say by hand, uh, first off, treat it as a population. Notice that it says 2 theta. I mentioned that in class as, or 2 omega. Sorry, I mentioned that in class. Also, use the calc here. Stat edit list 1. Stat calc 1 variable statistics. X bar, and we will use, we will treat that as a population. Plus or minus 2 omega gives us that. 29 is outside that interval. 29 is an outlier. Should be a pretty easy question to get. And then a lot of these we did do in class. So I'm just going to highlight a few, like a normal probability question. This will be a day two question here. What is the probability of randomly choose student? We will score between those two. All right, find two different Z scores in the area that corresponds to those, the left of those. All right, and then subtract. This next one, we've got another normal question. Um, this time we have a random sample, so it's all about X bar. It says mean height, so you gotta use the formula that has X bar in it. And Z, all right, I don't know the probability X bar is greater than 70.5 use that again I can use the Z there because it does come from a normal population all right I would be greater than that so do one minus that's that answer 0162 find the probability that the mean is less than 68.5 so the mean is lower than average so the probability should be low you get that right there again pause this whenever you need to what's the probability that it's between those two which we'll is subtract the areas of the two Z scores there, 90% chance. Next one here, we've got conditional probability. First off, that should be 900. And then probability that uh, they didn't graduate college given they smoke. All right, so given that they're smokers and then find uh, the people that, uh, you know, do smoke and didn't graduate college. And it's pretty easy there. This probability um, that given they don't smoke, they graduate from college. Uh, given a uh, randomly chosen person from this population, what's the probability they have a college degree? So that's everybody. Uh, they did not go to college and they also do not smoke. And they smoke and went to college. There you go. Conditional probability, folks. This next one is binomial 10 choose 2. I want to win twice and lose 8 times. That exact probability. I want to win between 1 and 3. I want to win once, lose 9, plus win twice, lose 8, plus win 3 times, lose 7. Again, you know how to type that in. If I want to win just once, then I want to do 1 minus the probability of losing all 10 times. All right, folks, we have a normal approximation. So you're going to have to know that, that formula. Um, so what it says, but this comes from binomial. So you're going to have to know that um, in the mu equals n times p. And then the omega is equal to the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. That's the formula to use. Okay, then you, then you get a mu, population mean, and a, a standard deviation. And then I want to get to more than 140 hits. So use that normal approximation, find a z score. All right, I want to do better than below average. So it should be above 50% chance. Here I want to do better than above average, so it's going to be below 50% chance. Okay. This would be a day one question coming up here, and it's just simply multiply the two probabilities. Here, uh, probability of C plus probability of D minus their intersection. That's another, so it's, they're both day one questions. All right, again, anything with binomials, day two. 6%, so again, use normal approximation, 15 and 3.75, and then there we go, normal approximation. I want to be less than that, so I do use the z-score, that area that corresponds to that z-score there. All right, um, I want to be greater than, so I'm going to do 1 minus, 
Uh, find the mean, we actually did that in part A, so that's kind of a repeat. This is Poisson, folks, that is the formula. Probability X is three. All right, so there we go. Um, three or four. All right, so again, you have that. Actually, I think on your formula sheet, um, Actually, looking on your formula sheets, uh, Poisson is not on there, so I will add that in, folks. There you go, it was not on there. I will make sure to add that in if it's on your phone. There's a good chance it is. Okay, probability between zero or two or fewer means zero, one, or two. So again, I will add that in your formula sheets on your official one starting Monday. Now we have confidence interval, 95% confidence interval. That's all about the Z. Find P hats. All right, then use that formula there. You get your margin of error and make that interval. All right, doing well, folks. Here, let's do a uh, let's do a test with a proportion. Uh, more than that's the alternate because it's greater than. Remember, the alternate hypothesis is always an inequality. All right, so first off, uh, this is a one tail because it's greater than one tail. It's a right tail test. Um, the z score that corresponds to 0 0.05 um, would be. 1.645. Yogi sees a squirrel in the backyard, so he's currently whining. We'll have to let him out here in a second. Yogi's currently 0 for 90 in catching squirrels, but folks, I think this one's the one. The squirrels are getting slower outside. Anyway, compute your test stats, 1.04. Um, and then that is not in the rejection region. You don't reject HO, so you're going to say what HO says looks good to you. Folks, we got another one just like this, okay? So is it an increase? That means greater than what it was before. Right tail test again, this time at alpha 0.01. Um, that's at 2.33. Again, if alpha is 0.01, that means 99% to left. So look up the area that course, look up the area of 0.99, whatever's closest to that, and look up what z-score corresponds to that closest area. Anyway, you get a z-score of huge, 14.9, so you definitely reject HO and you say that uh, the proportion is greater than 0.674. All right, here's another hypothesis test. This is a two-sided one, because we're gonna test the claim that it's not 80. All right, so we are um, alpha's 0.05, that's a 95% confidence interval z-score. All right, find your test stats. It is in the rejection region, so we are going to reject HO. Then null and say that the mean is not 80. Again, pause this whenever you need to. Folks, we have a two sample confidence interval. Uh, so the degrees of freedom is always the lower sample size, which is 28 minus one. That's less than 27, let's use T. All right, so you got the formula X bar one minus X bar two plus or minus T star in the square root. Standard deviation of one squared over n1 plus standard deviation of two squared over n2. Your mo 1.33, and there's your interval, which that's, uh, that is another error. And if you've watched the calc video, uh, those happen. That should be 3.20, 3.20. All right, and we're moving on. Here is another proportion, one sample, confidence, or a, um, Sorry, hypothesis test. Um, it's to have, let's see, so they say that at most that's greater than or, or that's less than or equal to, so the alternate would be more than. Again, that should not be a decimal right there, so it should be 0.025. Anyway, find your z-score. P hat is 0.035. Z squared is 1.28, though it is not in the rejection region. You don't reject HO and you say that they can claim that, even though they got a result that was bigger than that. Folks, it does tell you what the alternate hypothesis is there. Just use the data they gave you. This is a, this is not, that is wrong, folks. All of this is wrong. In fact, we'll have to do this one in class because Folks, your sample size, your sample size is less than 30. So we gotta use degrees of freedom is 21. Degrees of freedom is 21. So we're gonna move past that, forget that happened. 49, folks, 49. So make sure to look at that one tomorrow in class. 
Uh, reading scores follow normal distribution. Okay, SAT and SAT math. So find the z-scores for both. And whichever z-score is better, folks, that's where you did better on. All right. And we keep moving on. Just a few more in this video. This will be one video. Um, just simple confidence interval. You do use z for that. We made it 95%. Uh, there's p hat. Just do 19 divided by 152. Margin of error is that. And boom. All right, this is a good one. We haven't talked about this one yet. We will tomorrow. This is a one sample because we're going to see if his observations hold up to what is thought to be the density. Okay, so are they the same? Is the mean 5.5? Is it not 5.5? So that is a two sample. He had 29 measurements. We're going to use T. All right, this one was done correctly. Degrees is a two-tailed. T test degrees of freedom is 28. Just do 29 minus 1. Look that up. And that's your, your um, rejection region uh, T-score. Okay, then you find the test stats. And uh, it's not the rejection region. You don't reject HO and you say that, uh, you know, states uh, his, that his results are significantly different. They are not. His results are 5.5. They are, are basically the same as the accepted density. Same thing with 57, folks. We haven't done this one yet. We will. Um, so are the heights different? Now, they didn't give us the heights for World War I, World War II soldiers. They just told us that World War I, was, the, the height was bigger. X-bar 1 was bigger um, by 1. So I'm going to put, or I'm sorry, World War II was bigger. I'm going to put World War II as X-bar 1 and World War II as X-bar 2. If you did the opposite, you would just have a negative 1 there. So I'm going to flip those, and folks, Yogi's getting excited. He sees a squirrel. We might have to pause after this. Um, and then plug that in again. That's for World War One. That's for World War Two. It doesn't matter. You're just going to you're just gonna add them. Anyway, you get 2.94. Um, we do have enough in our sample size to use Z here. This is a two-sided 5%. You know, alpha is 0.05, so that's why we get negative 1.96, 1.96. And test that is in the rejection region. So we reject HO and we say that the heights are different. The means are not the same. And let's see here. This next one, this is just uh, this is a T distribution, one sample confidence interval. Degrees of freedom 13, 95% confidence interval. Uh, that T star is 2.160. There's your margin of error, and there is your interval. And moving on here, now on to 66. So we want to have a probability of being correct. So that's why we do 76 divided by 98. All right. Claims that such a test correct less than. So that, that's the alternate hypothesis. That's a left-tailed alpha is 0.05. All right. Uh, get a test stat of negative 0.59, which is not in the rejection region. We do not reject the null hypothesis. And we say that the proportion could be greater than or equal to 0.8. And it looks like here, folks, I have two more to go over with. I think we'll make it under 15 minutes. This is just another normal distribution. What's the probability that x is less than or equal to 66? Um, we just keep that area. Top 10%, you look up what is closest to the z-score that closely matches an area of 0.9. That's 1.28. Just do a little algebra one there, folks. It's a tall country. All right, 71. This is the chi-square because you have many categories here. So observed versus expected. Um, it, it talks about equal, equal frequency. So you take 300 and divide it by 7. So that's 42.9 if you round. So it's all about observed minus expected squared divided by expected. First off, degrees of freedom is number of categories minus one, so that's six. Alpha is 0.05, use your chi-square distribution table to find that right there. 12.592 would begin the rejection region. It's all about observed minus expected squared divided by expected. Okay, just keep going down the days of the week. Um, add them up, divide by you know 42.9, you get, uh, it's barely in the rejection region. So you do reject it, and we say that um, the observed is not what you expected. They are not all equal. They are not all equal. Remember, we did 72. 72 has three categories. You do 150 divided by three because we're looking at do the dogs prefer them equally. 
and uh, so degrees of freedom two, alpha is 0 0.05, you can go from there. Folks, we're going to make it just under 15 minutes. This is Yak Math Videos, signing out.